Longtime Milwaukee mail carrier Andre Cross went from laughing along his route on Friday <laughs> to being shot and killed just hours later. No motive and no arrest yet, but surveillance video shows two suspects running to a silver SUV and taking off. I saw him that night, that evening, and he was singing to himself, walking. He was walking up to the door. Neighbors and co-workers heartbroken. He was a good person. Had three beautiful kids, a wife. Like Andre came to work every day with a smile on his face. If you were sad, he was sad. You, he's going to make sure you're going to get a smile. He's going to make you laugh. A $50,000 reward is now being offered in the case, one of a rash of attacks on postal carriers nationwide. They are traumatized. They're doing their job. You're at work delivering the mail, and someone comes up and stick a gun to you for some arrow keys. In Chicago, a frightening pattern, at least five such incidents since August. Many of the thieves trying to get their hands on so-called arrow keys, which unlock centralized community mailboxes. Others simply prying mailboxes open with the goal of committing identity theft. They're looking for checks. They're looking for credit cards. In Atlanta, 232 attacks from January 2019 to this past July. And in Orlando, at least six attacks in the last six months. <laughs> Back in Milwaukee, Andre Cross's brother just wants answers. We're hanging in there, taking it day by day. Andre is my little brother. And uh, we're hurt, really hurt. Some mail carriers say higher mail volume has forced them to work 12 to 14 hour shifts, requiring more deliveries after dark, making the job more dangerous. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching. A Las Vegas man returns from his trip to find his apartment completely ransacked by what he says are squatters. Yeah, in a quick second, he came face to face with one of them and it turned violent. Victoria Saha joins us near Arville and West Flamingo with more. Jermaine Prickett says he walked into the unthinkable. Almost every single item he owned was gone. And then the squatters returned, but this time one left with a gunshot wound. Apartment. And ransacked. This is what Jermaine Pritchett walked into after being away from home for a couple of months. They pretty much took everything. His apartment everything. destroyed. They pulled things apart. They cut the bottom of the couches. For the sake of his privacy and safety, we aren't disclosing exactly which apartment complex he lives in. How did they get in? I, that I still don't know. Pritchett says squatters took everything from electronics to linen to clothing to socks. This lady here. And just as he was on the phone with 911, Pritchett says one of the squatters came in. Not sure of what was going to happen, Pritchett grabbed his gun, shooting the person once. And I was scared to death. You know, I, I heard the noise. Because, you know, nobody comes to my place without an invite. Do you just go into people's places? So what if it's open? Is this yours? No. Do you pay rent here? Video shared to us by Pritchett shows the aftermath. The squatter bleeding and denying breaking in. Look what they did to my place. I didn't rob you. When you're in that kind of a situation, you know that it is life or death. Police showed up and took the squatter to the hospital. In their notes, they classified this as a self-defense. It didn't just stop there. Pritchett says the next night, he caught someone else trying to break in. I grabbed his, his, his arm as he was reaching in. I held him. This incident has caused Pritchett to be stripped of his sense of security and safety. I definitely feel 100% violated. Pritchett said he had to plead with his apartment complex numerous times to change his locks, and then they finally did. I also called the complex to see what more they could do to prevent this from happening again. They did not want to comment. Victoria Saha, 8 News Now. Well, Victoria also reached out to Metro Police. They say this incident is still under investigation. Now, they couldn't say whether that person who was shot is out of the hospital yet, but said the suspect was cited and the second person you saw was arrested by police. Now, they also say if you are ever in a situation, it is best to call 911, but it is, it is up to you to decide what the best thing for you is and, of course, your safety. Good morning. Ooh, what a morning. It's already 9 o'clock. I went on 10 o'clock. Today is Monday, December 12th. The year is 2023. 
I just had to throw the ass out, man. Poor I had enough of the ass. I said, hey, this, this is ridiculous. And Grace was just throwing out, he on his way to a homeless shelter. He don't get his act together. I'm gonna drop his ass off in one of these damn, uh, what do you call them, dog places, dog pounds? They can re-sign him home for some white folks so he can get to drive him up a wall. Anyway, woo, well, I'll turn packing those two videos. A mail carrier was shot and killed at his job delivering newspapers. Andre Cross was shot on his delivery route Friday. He's being remembered as a joyful man who could change your whole mood. On his route in Milwaukee, I think the city, it doesn't say the city somewhere in Milwaukee. I guess Milwaukee is the city, not Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, Y'all. And I, I, I hope I don't offend anybody with what I'm about to say in this video. But I learned a long time ago, if you're a black person who wants to live a normal life and stay alive, you have to move away from these black areas. When I first bought my first house, in, and I moved to Atlanta in 1989, my mother, my family moved here. My mother and my brothers and sisters moved here and some other relatives. And then I moved here after them. But when you get to a large urban city like Atlanta, I've seen so many neighborhoods go awry when black folks moved in and destroyed them. Stone Mountain, Lithonia, parts of Cascade, Clayton County. It seems like they're like locusts. As much as I love my people, there's a problem here. And if you want to live a normal life where you don't have to worry about somebody shooting you while you're out delivering mail or someone breaking into your home and stealing all your shit, you got to separate yourself. And I learned this years ago. You know, I lived in Stone Mountain. I lived and had a house in Athonia. I lived in parts of Midtown. I lived in Atlanta most of the time. Some either in Mid Midtown. I lived near Perimeter Mall. Those of you who know the Atlanta area. Uh, I didn't really feel safe until I moved to Buckhead. And I purchased a home at 3000 West Roxborough Road in the early 90s. I mean, late, early 2000s, 2001. I bought that house in yeah, 2001, right before September 11th. That was about the safest neighborhood I ever felt in my entire life. Safe, secure, never had an issue that, at, up there at that home other than racist white folks sticking their nose in my business. But you know what? After a while, I learned to give them the double fingers and close my door and ignore them like I'm ignoring this mutt right here. He just clowning in something terrible. I, 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 just, I don't even know what to say about these dogs other than I don't know if we're supposed to be spanking them more or I just, what? I mean, what are we doing wrong? I don't know what to do, but should I take the shoe out there and beat the crap out of his ass or something? Does he need to sit down and shut the fuck up? I, I'm just trying to understand this. I don't understand what we're doing wrong here because other dogs never acted this bad. And I, I, maybe I don't remember the man this bad. Or maybe because I had a backyard and throw their ass out there, they could run around in the backyard. I think that was part of the thing. They would be outside most of the day. But if you want to live a normal life, y'all, as a black person, and I hate to say this, you got to leave certain areas alone. When I hear people, black folks say, I don't live in a black neighborhood or a black area, I think to myself, you don't even know what the hell you about, what you just said. What you want to say is, I want to live in an upscale black neighborhood with educated black folks who try to do something positive with their life. You just don't want to live in any black neighborhood. You want to live with black people who are trying to do something positive. Who ain't out there trying to rob, shoot, and kill you and steal your shit or take your life. See, some of my friends end up in these black neighborhoods. I don't want to be in a black neighborhood. They bought these houses in these horrible areas. I've been down that path before. But some of these areas ain't going through gentrification. I have a friend who bought a house over there off of near Greenbrier Mall. That shit is horrible over there. Brand new house. It's horrible. And he's complaining about all the stuff. And after I told him, do not buy this house in this area because this shit ain't going nowhere. He had problem after problem after problem with them heathens over there. I'm going to be in a black neighborhood. You don't have to be around these heathens. See, just because everybody's black doesn't mean you need to be surrounded by the ignorant asses. Sometimes you got to separate yourself from the pack and go do something, be someplace where you can have a positive life without worrying about somebody stealing your shit, breaking in your car, shooting at you on the highway, 
as you try to get home. See, some people are just living normal lives, but then you got these heathens out there. They're not trying to live a normal life. They're trying to, they're, they're like locusts. They're trying to swoop in on the innocent people, the people who are trying to do the right thing, and then they steal their shit. I take their life. Ain't no way in hell I'd be trying to move into some of these black neighborhoods. Just say, I want to live in a black area. No way. Because you, 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 you better choose neighborhoods. And let's just keep it real, y'all. In Atlanta, ain't too many black safe neighborhoods that are predominantly black because it's just it's a mixture of people. You got, you go down to Cascade and all these places, you got million dollar homes next to the ghetto. So you got all these hood rat niggas preying on the people who got the money, going after their houses, their cars, their whatever, they, they mail, they whatever. Kicking in their doors while they have work. No, I can't do that. I'm not doing it. I don't want to live around in heathens. There is no safe for black. There is no safe space for black people in black neighborhoods because you're gonna be vic you're gonna become a victim, either of theft, murder, assault, and I, I just say it's just reality. You a self hating black person? No, I don't want to live in Niggerville no more. I've lived in Niggerville. I know what it's like. Y'all, when my friend Solomon was shot and killed here in Atlanta about uh, February of 2021, I begged this man to stay in that house and stay off these streets while this shit was going on in the middle of that pandemic. But he didn't want to do that. Man, I'm going out. I'm going to live my life. I said, dude, you need to stay in the house. You need to avoid these clubs and avoid these places. Just, just chill for a second. You'll still be able to live your life. But right now, shit too crazy. That was on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Solomon was shot and killed that Thursday morning. He stood right in my house, sat right at this table when we were talking about I was in here at this time. I was at my other townhouse, which I wish I still was that over there. And I had this talk with him. I had, I had kept having repeated conversations with Solomon. Dude, it's a pandemic going on. People are crazy out here. They're shooting. Just stay away from these niggas. But he couldn't do it. He was shot and killed over there near the bluff, which is a horrible. He was at over at in the bluff. What was he doing down there? Where was he going? I think he was leaving the club. I never got an answer what he was doing over there in the bluff at three, four, five o'clock in the morning when he got shot. Then he tried to drive to the highway, tried the hospital where he worked, Grady Hospital, and he died on the highway. He wrecked his car and died. I was in shock about that. That traumatized me tremendously because I had just had a, a long conversation, multiple conversations about to that man about staying away from these hood rat nigga neighborhoods and these niggas because they don't care about your life. They don't care about their own life. You know, I read these, I see these stories of black people getting killed by other black folks and we just walk through life like it ain't nothing. No, instead of realizing, okay, I have to protect myself. I can't be around these seasons. I can't live in those neighborhoods. I can't do it unless they're going through gentrification. Unless they're pushing all the heathens out, okay, they believe it, so I'm cool with this. But as if they stand put and they ain't going nowhere, I'm not going over there. My friend who brought the house down there, green bar, housing projects all around there, who are they gonna do, nuclear bombing damn niggas over there or something? All that foot traffic up and down the street near his house, I said, that's the problem. Look at all these people walking from these housing projects. All day long, all night, crowds of people. I'm like, what is this? I ain't no way in hell all about that house. I want to be in a black neighborhood. I don't. I told him, go up there to Cobb. I said, go out there to Gwinnett. You work in the areas. Why do you come down here to this hood right area? This is a mistake. He realizes it now. After he didn't have to put burglar bars on that house and cameras around. And people stole every package that was dropped off at that house. They didn't even sit there five minutes before somebody would run up that porch and snatch it. He had to put burglar bars up. Alarm system. Finally moved his cousin in there to keep an eye on the house where he's at work. He had to literally move somebody in that damn house. That's how rough that shit is over there. The per he moved his cousin in there who works from home and he sits there monitoring the whole house the whole time like security. 
Armed security, basically, because he got a gun on him. He might have to use that damn gun. I said, y'all might have to use that damn gun. Y'all been taking classes? In them hood rat neighborhoods. There ain't no way in here. Then you pay over two hundred something thousand dollars for that house. I said, you paid that much for the house? Over here? I'm like, did you not? But he did it on his own. I'd have never paid that much for that house. So he bought the most expensive house in that terrible, terrible, terrible area. It is disgusting. The day I went down there to visit him at that house, he gave me the address I was driving down at. I'm pulling up to the street he lives on, about a half a block away. News cameras everywhere. People all around. I'm like, what the fuck going on over here? Somebody had just got shot and killed that day, that morning. Right by his house, half a block away. I had to drive through this mess. And I'm looking like, what the fuck going on over here? And I, get to, I said, did you see that was going up there? He said, I heard. I'm thinking, he over there, I'm packing boxes. I've been packing back up, I'm packing my back, shit back up and get the hell out of there. But he ain't gonna learn. Once you buy a home in those types of neighborhoods, and you bought one of the most expensive houses that they sold over there, <laughs> you stuck. And you're gonna be underwater. See, a lot of us don't understand that sometimes you can buy a house in the wrong neighborhood and that shit would appreciate like a damn Hyundai Sonata, like a 1992 Hyundai Sonata. You won't be able to get out of there. A lot of neighborhoods, homes don't appreciate in value. Prime example, when I bought that house in Stone Mountain in 1993, that value hit like dropped like a rock for decades, for years. And rise, the numbers didn't rise until all this shit started happening with the pandemic and stuff. The mountains went down, 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 down. That's why I left. I said, okay, this ain't working. Even in Lithonia, bought a brand new house around down, Lithonia. The house was dropped. I paid 185 for that house. I think at the rock bottom is worth 50,000. Mm -hmm. Within 10 years or less. They didn't rise back up until recently. But they're be going to go right back down because the crime is off the chain over there now. Again, you can't live in these areas. You're supposed to, God, you're out here, he's singing that morning, delivering the mail, living happy. You know, long cutting them niggas. What did they take from them? They probably brought them up some keys to unlock some mailboxes. Did they have to kill them? Seriously, did they have to shoot that man to do that? See, while you trying to live a normal life doing everything right, when you in them hood rat neighborhoods and get around them niggas over in Niggerville, them niggas ain't doing right. They looking at you like, we gonna get your ass. You become the victim. You're the victim. And, and, they, just, and they just prey on these people in these neighborhoods. See, I have so many friends, I have another friend, friends of mine, they brought this house in East Point. They told me, we built a house in East Point. I said, East Point? I said, okay, no big deal. And then I, one day I was riding the dog. They said, oh, come see the house. It's almost done. So I drove down there. I got down there. You know, East Point. I looked around. I said, okay, y'all. Oh, it's changing, Walter. This area is changing. I said, I said, this area is not changing. Those apartments over there are Section 8. They're going to be that way forever. That's a housing project over there. They didn't even know the area. I said, y'all don't know where y'all at? Two years later, they didn't packed up and left. Not two or three years later, they had break-ins, the doors kicked in, cars stolen, um, vandalism, mailbox packages stolen. One of us held at gunpoint, that was the final straw where they pulled them guns on their ass and he's getting out that damn car and robbed their ass. I warned them, I said, listen, y'all look, these niggas down here, are going to take everything, y'all Y'all going, I tried to warn them. I tried my best to warn them. Ooh, they didn't stay there long. They stole that house and ran. Now they way out in Ellenwood. Joe Hawks reached and knocked off that house. They lucky to get out from under that house. All that hell they went through over there with that house. But I went down there and looked. I said, whoa. But they already didn't buy the house at that point. I was like, huh, okay. I don't know what they paid for that house down there in East Point. It was a beautiful home. Very nice. I mean, it was a gorgeous house. It was just in the wrong neighborhood. And they only, they only stayed there about two, three, maybe three, four years, through two or three years. And whatever it was, it was a very short period of time because they had enough. 
They can't get no deliveries of anything. <laughs> it was just like, <sighs> but we want to be around black folks. You know, you, you, know, you don't want to be around all black people. You want to be around selective black people who are doing some positive. Now the neighborhood they live in now is a black area and it's beautiful. Upscale housing. They paid a lot of money for that house too. They finally woke up and said, we got to get the fuck up out of here. They paid a hell of a lot more money for that house. In a safe, secure neighborhood. In a clean area. Now other black folks who are thinking like them. Who are maintaining the houses are beautiful over there. With no hood rat niggas running around and like roaches. If you live in an area and you see all them niggas walking and running up and down them streets going nowhere and doing shit and standing around at the gas station and the grocery stores and at the drugstore and what do y'all think they over there doing? Nothing. Waiting to rob your ass is what they're waiting on. And you'd be lucky to get out of it alive. Now. This young man was got out of his apartment for several months in Vegas and got back in there and all the shit was stolen. You know how many people came home to their home and found out all this shit was gone as they rambled through? Y'all know how often that happens to black folks? And y'all know how often it is it's black people doing it to black folks? Y'all know how many times people come home a long day at work out from vacation and got whatever and they get there and all this shit gone. All of it. Something they didn't work hard for. The alarm system be snipped. Y'all, maybe, I, maybe I've just seen too much. Maybe because I know so many people and I hear these stories. Well, so you moved out too far. Why are you moving out that way out there? Because I was tired of you niggas. That's why. I was tired of constantly walk, walk, looking over my shoulders while I go to the gas station. Or being careful about bringing groceries in the house while I'm, I'm packing the car. I'm making sure, looking into my car, making sure that it was spotless before I locked the door. Make sure my gym bag, nothing's visible. Not even the little wire that the phone charger. Everything must be gone. No mail on the seats. It must be spotless. Because they're going to bust that window and try to get whatever's in there. You can even leave a bottle of water in your car. <laughs> Look like you have a little water and drinks to throw all that shit out. They might be thirsty. And tear your damn car just to get that fucking bottle of water. I get tired of it. I got tired of driving past the flowers on the side of the road where they're doing the vigils and the murder happened. I lived in Grand Park, y'all, the last few years. There were three murders right there by that place. Three murders, right? But one, one took place right by that Waffle House. They just built it in that new Kroger on Glenwood. A young girl was shot and killed. Then a few blocks over, somebody else got shot and killed. It was like murders all around. I, and I, needed, I started seeing the traffic of people walking, walking. And I looked at the price of the homes. I said, I'm not going to pay all this damn money to put up with this shit. I said, there's no sense me spending that type of money. Now they made a mess over here. This damn car. <laughs> and you have to wonder, I don't live in a black neighborhood. Well, not me. If they're not upscale, educated black folks who are trying to do something positive with their lives, I don't want to be around them niggas. I don't care. You know, if the, unless, unless the area is going down. When I first moved into the old fourth ward in 1998, I built that house down there in 1998. It was horrible. And I ended up moving in 2001. And I was the only one who moved out of there. I just couldn't take it no more, y'all. I just could not try it. I was trying to hold on. I was trying. Um, I had some stuff stolen out the backyard, patio furniture off the front porch, bicycle, some various. Oh, I need this door open. Oh, I just realized I left the dang bone door open for food with these damn dogs. But Old Fourth Ward is a beautiful neighborhood now because it's gone through gentrification. There's still some hood rat niggas over there. But when I lived there, it was horrible. It was horrible. Horrible. I mean, I felt like I was in a third world country around them heathens. Because I didn't live my life like that. I wasn't out there on those streets walking around. I, I wasn't out there selling drugs or standing on some street corner, just a bunch of niggas sitting around. Or they would go to these parks and play cards or uh, dominoes and sit there all day and drinking and drunk niggas and... and baby mamas and children running wild. I didn't live my life like that. And so when you live in these areas and you drive by this shit daily, 
<sighs> okay, you get it's depressing. It's very depressing. When you see them niggas who live so foul, and you say, what's wrong with us? And that's when I said, okay, I gotta get up out of here. It was just depressing. It was every day I was in the old Fort Fort, and don't forget I was renovating houses in East Lake and Kirkwood, which was just as horrible. So I'm going from one depressing neighborhood to another depressing neighborhood all day long. I'm over, I live in the old Fort Fort, which is horrible. I'm renovating in East Lake and Kirkwood, which was horrible. It was just, I couldn't do this. It was so depressing. And I needed to get out. And so I ran up to Buckhead about that house. And it was, it was like, a, my, like my whole world changed. For once, I was like, okay, I'm back somewhere beautiful. I don't have to look at this trash and filth and drug dealers and niggas running wild and shooting and listening to gunfire and niggas dying and all robberies and rapes and all this stuff. I got sick of it. That's right. When people say they want to live in a black neighborhood, I say, okay, we're going to go and knock yourself out. I hope you're looking for a nice, black, upscale neighborhood with people taking care of their homes, who are not standing on no street corner, who are not drinking and doing drugs all times of night and partying and up all night long. You, better, you say you want to live in a black neighborhood. You better know what you're talking about. You don't want to live in just any black neighborhood. And y'all, it's okay to say I don't want to live around them heathens. I don't want to live around them heathens. I just don't. I'm not putting my life in danger. Living in no neighborhood where I am at risk taking the trash out. Bringing groceries in the house. Simply walking down the street. I don't want to live in those neighborhoods. It's too much crime. And I know we all say it can happen anywhere. Yeah, but it mainly happens in the hood rat neighborhoods. You're going to be in trouble. And I don't live in no fantasy world, y'all. I got hood rat family members I wouldn't even live next door to. I do. I'm not living next to them. They family members. Uh-uh. I don't live next to them either. But I have friends and associates who are hood rat. I don't live next to them either. Everybody black, is, you know, everybody black has been trying to plant flowers and um, cut their grass and keep a, a safe neighborhood. And, you know, it, it's so weird because when I moved up there, it was weird. The white folks were very apprehensive when I moved into that neighborhood up there in Buckhead. And they had a, they were very, I, I had the most beautiful house on that street. That still didn't stop them from being apprehensive. I didn't give a fuck. I closed my door. I had a long driveway. Look up 3000 West Roxborough. I had a long driveway and I had an electric gate and I closed it. I don't want to deal with them folks and they nosy behavior. So I moved over there, set on an acre in, no, in right near Lenox Mall. It was private. What I did like about it is it was quiet at nighttime. I didn't feel I was in an element of danger outside. I felt safe to pull my car up to the front door and take my time taking the groceries into the house. I felt safe at nighttime taking, dragging my garbage can out to the street. I felt so safe when I walked to the mailbox or when I was planting flowers, I was cutting the grass and doing something. I did cut the grass up there for a little while before I hired somebody. I had a little riding on more child there, but I'm riding on. I was like, this is funny. I said, okay, I can't do this shit. Got a hundred degree heat, and I have a little straw head on and shades on out there and a mask cutting. I said, okay, this ain't for me. I had some Mexican. I said, okay, y'all come on. Cut that grass. I sold that riding on more because I said, I ain't doing that shit no more. Certain neighborhoods are just safer. Yes, shit can happen anywhere. But a lot of shit happens in these hood black, black neighborhoods. Let's just acknowledge John. It's okay. It's okay for us to live in truth. Because if you're living in a fantasy world, you're going to end up like my friend Solomon. He thought he was safe out there in the streets after I warned him repeatedly to stay away from the hood rat niggas. After I warned him repeatedly he didn't get it. Some people love these streets at nighttime. And I noticed that about a lot of black gays in particular. They love running the streets at night, not me. 
Five thirty, six o'clock, the sun go down. I'm riding, rolling towards the house. And if I'm out late, it's because I left the gym late. You better believe that. But when I walk out that gym, I might hit a Kroger grocery store on my way home, and I'm heading straight to the house. I might be riding on streets. I ain't no way, no bars and clubs, none of that, honey. Mm -mm, not right now. In fact, if I do go someplace, a bar or club, I like to do it early, like five. They have these on Sunday afternoon. They have a tenth of at 10th and Pete, my 10th and Monroe Drive. And they meet there about five, six, seven. I go there. I mean, when the sun started to go down, I said, okay, let me go my ass home where it's safe. Let me get on back out to that. Way out from, I you so far away from everybody. I don't know, why did I move away from you to make the niggas? Because I was tired. I lived in Atlanta 30 years. I'm tired of seeing these ignorant ass niggas walking around these streets. I'm tired of the gunfire and the dangerous element and the feeling like your life is at risk everywhere you go. I'm tired of all the homeless people wandering around. You trying to get gas, they begging for money. And you trying to go to the grocery store, they in the parking lots. I just get sick of it. I don't see no homeless people out here. I don't see them living under bridges and stuff. They're not allowing that shit to happen over here. When I go up to this grocery store, it's nice and clean. They have security out there. That walks, they have two security. One out there driving around a lot. One in the store walking around making sure everything's nice and safe. I haven't had any issues. <laughs> I don't expect to have any issues. Yeah, crime could happen anywhere. It can. But if you're a black person moving to certain areas and you to make you know, it's gonna be a sitting duck. Now, I'm not afraid he bought that house down in the green by. He wants out. He's trying to figure out what to do. Maybe rent it Section 8. That's all he can do. I said, when the housing market was at its peak, I told you to sell that house. When people were desperate to find a house in Mona, when you should have ran the end. Why didn't you do that? I don't know, Walter. I tried to warn you. But man, I can rent it Section 8. I said, you're going to Section 8 that nice house. They're going to destroy it. Don't do that. You there now. Keep taking your class. He got his, they got his cousin there. They got a gun. They've been going to the shooting range. They have to shoot out the window. Wait, my God, you niggas. They may have to. You're there now. Ain't no out. You paying under $1,000 for your mortgage. Or somewhere like that. You ain't going to find rent nowhere that damn cheap. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to say. Poor that Grace and Grace is in pain out there. And I got to figure out, can you give a dog pain pills? I'm about to find out because he's he, he not happy. That he's been new to, he just been, uh, he's been in a lot of discomfort. Poor baby, that's why he out there be mad. Cause he, I know he hurt him. And I don't know what to do. Can I, did they give dogs pain pills or something to call it? <laughs> Either of those much. Earl bracing over here, he needs some help. Might have to take him up to this. He's in a lot of pain. Something's not right. I know, Grayson. I know it's hurting. I know you're hurting. I know. Ain't nothing I can do about it. You gave him neutered. I don't know how long this is going to go on. I'm going to get comfort. He's mad. He just, he ain't even going to eat. He won't use the bathroom. Won't go outside. He just, I don't know what to say. Poor thing. He's staring at me now. He's like, what you? If <sighs> Grayson, can y'all see him? Oh, I think he's over there. There's Grayson. There's Grayson, I know. Any other way, y'all. Uh, um, this video is about, ooh, I'm 30 minutes on this damn video. Today is Monday, it's December 12th. I got a lot of stuff I need to do around here on this Monday. And it's still wet and dirty and rainy outside. It's, when will the sun come out? When will the sun come out? I can see clearly now the rain is gone. It's gonna be a bright, 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 bright sunny day one day. I don't know when. But anyway, this these stories I hate what's happening in the black community. I hate what's happening to our people. I hate that my friend Solomon and other people I've known have lost their lives here in Atlanta because they trusted these these streets and they thought that they were okay. I hate what happened to that rapper takeoff in Texas because he was around some friends, he, people he thought he could be safe around. I hate what happened to Ms. Robinson 
in Cabo, Mexico, but she was around friends and she thought she could be safe. You know, I hate this stuff. And I hate what we do to each other. I hate it. I hate it. Anyway, I'm out of here. Today is Monday, December 12th, year 2022. Y'all enjoy the rest of this beautiful day.